Hi, welcome to part 4 of the video series about physical quantities. In the previous one, we have learned how to add two vectors which are in the same direction or in opposite direction to each other. Afterwards, we learned how to use tail to tail or tail to head methods to add vectors which are not parallel. Finally, we tried to add two perpendicular vectors. In this video, we are going to learn how to divide a vector into its components and then we will practice this knowledge on two questions. As we learned in the previous lesson, we can add any two vectors to get a single vector which has the same effect as the previous two. In the example on the screen, we are adding two perpendicular vectors A and B and get a resultant vector R. We do it by using the tail to tail method. Of course, we could easily use tail to head method as well. If we can combine two vectors to get a single one, we can reverse the process and split a single vector into two. To do so, we draw the single vector. Then, starting from its head, we are drawing parallels to x axis and y axis. Finally, we draw two vectors starting from the tail of the resultant and ending at respective parallel lines. As you can see, we are getting exactly same diagram as the one on the left. Let's redraw the diagram again, but now instead of naming the two vectors as A and B, we will name the horizontal one as Rx and the vertical one as Ry. These two vectors, which were derived from one single vector, are called components of the original vector. And the process itself is called the solving of a vector into its components. There is a reason in splitting a vector into two components, which are perpendicular to each other. Let's resolve vector A into its components by repeating the steps we learned before. We draw two parallel lines starting from the head of vector A and then starting from its tail we draw vectors AX and AY. In this diagram we can see addition of two vectors by using tail to tail method. Now let's replace it by tail to head method. To do so the only thing we need to do is instead of drawing AY starting from the tail of AX we draw it starting from the head of AX. Doing so will leave us with a diagram consisting of a right triangle. Before proceeding with the components of the vector, let's change our focus to maths and do some revision about basic functions in trigonometry. On the screen, we have a right triangle with A and B as its sides, C as hypotenuse, and alpha and theta as angles. As we know, sine of an angle is equal to the ratio of a side opposite to it to hypotenuse. For angle of theta, sine theta is equal to b over c. Rearranging the equation to b is equal to c times sine theta will help us in calculating the length of side b in case that hypotenuse and the angle theta have been provided. Cosine of an angle in a right triangle is equal to the ratio of an adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So, cosine of theta will be equal to A over C. Again, we can rearrange the equation to A is equal to C times cosine theta. Now, we can switch back to components of vectors and use the trigonometric equations to calculate magnitudes of AX and AY. AY is the angle opposite to theta. So its magnitude will be equal to hypotenuse, which is the magnitude of vector A in this case, multiplied by sine theta. AX is adjacent to angle theta. So its magnitude will be equal to A times cosine theta. It's enough time to see all this knowledge in action. 
We are given two vectors, each with a magnitude of 20 newtons. Vector A makes an angle of 20 degrees with the horizontal, and vector B makes an angle of 40 degrees. The task is to add these two vectors. Of course, we can easily manage it by using tail to head method. First, we will draw the vector A. Then, starting from its head, we will draw the vector B. The resultant vector is the vector starting at tail of A and ending at head of B. We have managed to draw the resultant vector, but it will be very difficult for us to calculate its magnitude and direction in this case. The task could be much easier if these two vectors were parallel to each other or perpendicular. Is there a way to achieve this? We can resolve each of these vectors into their components. Vector A to AX and AY and Vector B to BX and BY. Now we can do some rearrangement of vectors to clarify the diagram. As a result, we have two vectors AX and BX on horizontal axis and two vectors AY and BY on a vertical axis. Let's resolve the resultant vector into its components too. Now we have RX and RY. As we can see, RX is equal to AX plus BX as well as RY is equal to AY plus BY. As we remember from the previous slide, once the components are known, we can use Pythagoras theorem to calculate the magnitude of the resultant vector. After so much theory, it's time to do some calculation. First, we can calculate x component of vector A. x axis is adjacent to 20 degrees, so AX is equal to a times cosine 20. The result is 18.79 newtons to the right. Y axis is opposite to the angle of 20 degrees, so AY is equal to A times sine 20, which is 6.84 newtons upwards. Similarly, we can calculate BX and BY. BX is equal to B times cosine 40 which is 15.42 newtons to the right. By is equal to B times sine 40, which is 12.86 newtons upwards. Now we can calculate Rx and Ry. Rx is the sum of Ax and Bx. 18.79 plus 15.32 is equal to 34.11 newtons to the right. Ry is equal to the sum of Ay and By. 6.84 plus 12.86 is equal to 19.7 newtons upwards. At the end, we use Pythagoras theorem to calculate the magnitude of the resultant vector. R square is equal to Rx square plus Ry square. 34.11 square plus 19.7 square. After solving this equation, resultant is equal to 39.39 newtons. For all of the vectors above, not only we had calculated magnitudes, we have mentioned their directions as well. What about the resultant vector? We can't just simply say it is to the right or it's upwards or it's to the left or downwards. To specify its direction, we need to specify an angle on our diagram and then calculate that angle. To do so, once more, we ask for help from the trigonometry. We know that tangent of an angle is equal to the ratio of the opposite side over adjacent side. In this case, theta will be equal to inverse tangent of opposite side over adjacent side. The opposite side is 19.7 units and the adjacent side is 31.11 units. As a result, theta will be equal to 30.11 degrees. So, the resultant vector has 
39.39 newtons as a magnitude and 30.01 degrees as a direction. It must be difficult to understand from the first shot. So let's see another example. We are given three vectors and asked to calculate their resultant. This time we will straight start with calculating components. First, let's calculate all horizontal components. F1x is equal to 25 times cosine 46, which is 17.37 newtons to the right. F2x is equal to 40 times cosine 32, which is 33.92 newtons to the left. F3x is equal to 34 times sine 23, which is 13.28 newtons to the left. As you noticed, for F3x, we used sine instead of cosine. The reason for it is that F3x is not adjacent but opposite to the angle of 23 degrees. Rx is equal to the sum of all horizontal components. But there is trick here. Unlike the previous question, in this one, components of vectors are in various directions. So we have to decide which direction we will consider as positive and which one as a negative. For horizontal axis, we choose right as the positive and left as the negative direction. In this case, only direction of F1x will be positive. Directions of F2x and F3x will be negative. As a result, Rx is equal to 17.37 minus 33.92 minus 13.28. Rx is equal to minus 29.83. Due to the minus sign, we can say that Rx is 29.83 newtons to the left. Now let's work on y-axis. F1y is 25 times sine 46, which is equal to 17.98 newtons upwards. F2y is 40 times sine 32, which is 21.2 newtons upwards. Y-axis is adjacent to 23 degrees in case of F3. In this case, F3y is equal to 31.3 newton downwards. Ry is equal to the sum of all y components. For vertical axis, we choose upwards as positive and downwards as negative. In this case, F1y and F2y will have positive values and F3y will have negative value. So, Ry is equal to 17.98 plus 21.2 minus 31.3, which is equal to 7.88 newtons. The result is positive, which means direction of Ry is upwards, as we have chosen upwards as a positive direction. Now, let's use tail to head method to calculate the resultant vector. We draw our x to the left. Then from its head, we draw our y. The resultant will start from the tail of our x and end at the head of our y. We use Pythagoras theorem to calculate the magnitude of the resultant vector. r square is equal to negative 29.83 square plus 7.88 square. If we solve this equation for r, it will be equal to 30.85 newtons. Finally, let's calculate the direction of the resultant vector. First, we specify which angle we will use as direction. Then, we can use inverse of tangent function with ry as numerator and rx as denominator. The angle of the resultant vector is equal to 14.8 degrees. In this video, we have learned how to resolve a function into its components and how to use this knowledge in practice. Thank you for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications if you don't want to miss my other videos.